Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-karim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers. And our father, Abraham, and he is our father. And on Moses, and we believe in Moses. And on David and Solomon, we believe in them as well. And on Jesus, the Messiah, and on his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and on the last of them all, whether they believe him or they don't is irrelevant. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon them all. As we greet you on this, the 25th day, today was the 25th day, tonight, the 26th night of the month of Rabi'ul Awal in the month, in the year 1445, uh, from my sitting room here in the Caribbean island of Trinidad, we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and we are honored sitting in my sitting room here tonight it's already past the time of salatul isha uh, we have with us a student of mine from afghanistan i don't think i should tell you where he's resident now and we have two from uh, sorry one from turkey I won't tell you where he's resident now. And two from Afghanistan, a husband and wife were here, and she cooked a kabuli pilau for us yesterday. So we welcome uh, our students from Turkey and from Afghanistan who have traveled from so far to come uh, to visit me and to spend some time with me and my wife Aisha. And uh, we, we greet you on this sad night in the wake of the war which is intensified. It never ended. The war in the Holy Land. Nobody refers to the Holy Land anymore because they are living in a secularized world where religion is no longer recognized as anything important in international affairs. And so nobody refers to the Holy Land anymore, not even the government of Israel. And so it is Palestine or it's Israel, but not the Holy Land. But for us who recognize absolute truth to be located in the scripture which has come from the Lord God, it is Al Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, of course, the government of Egypt does not know that. <laughs> no, no, no. The government of Egypt does not know that. It is the Holy Land. And in the Holy Land there is war. And uh, this is something that we addressed in one of the first books that we've written in Islamic eschatology, which I advise you to read again now, after what is happening in the Holy Land, uh, entitled Jerusalem in the Quran. Uh, the book was written in my head more than 25 years ago, but it was published more than 20 years ago. And um, Jerusalem in the Quran, I can't repeat the subject now, it's a short video tonight, uh, gives you the context of the, for the subject in the Quran. In the Quran, this is essential reading for you. Now then, the events which have occurred over the last few days, and I'm being bombarded with requests from all around Sheikh, do offer us some comment to bring some clarity to us of what's happening in the Holy Land. And my first comment is to remind you, if you need to be reminded, that our Prophet Allah's blessings be upon him, he prophesied. He said, in the last age, in the end times, there'll be great liars. Russia doesn't lie. Putin doesn't lie. But there'll be great liars in the, great, in the end time. So beware, he said, beware. And um, <laughs> yes, we know what happened in Pearl Harbor 
was it 1945, when the American government was aware that Japan was planning a massive attack on the American fleet, the Armada, parked in Pearl Harbor in perhaps Hawaii. And they did not take any steps to protect the ships and to protect the sailors in the ships. And uh, they remained silent and the American uh, um, Armada was destroyed. And uh, I don't know, maybe 2,000 men lost their lives when Japan lost, launched this attack and the Americans knew the attack was coming. And why did they allow it to attack? Why were they silent? Because they had a plan to put into action and they needed, they needed this attack to take place to mobilize public opinion. And these innocent lives were lost because of the hypocrisy of the American government. The same thing happened in 9-11, <laughs> when not only did the American government know that a terrorist attack was being launched on the World Trade Center, but the American CIA was a part of planning and executing the attack, of course, in alliance with their sister, the Israeli Mossad. I don't know who played a major role and who played a minor role. That's an important between two sisters. And they allowed the attack to take place, although they knew it was going to come to, to attack, it was, it was going to take place. And so many innocent people lost their lives. Of course, there were those who were warned not to go to work on that day. And of course, they didn't go to work and their lives were saved. But the others who were not warned, they lost their lives on that day. And so now we say that it is impossible that Israel did not have knowledge that this attack was being launched a few days ago. If Israel was completely unaware, and if Israel was honest and truthful in saying we had no advance knowledge that this, launch, this attack was being launched, then I say to Israel from my sitting room here in the Caribbean island of Trinidad, if you are truthful, then the camel could also pass through the eye of a needle. No, <laughs> no, it's not possible that Israel was unaware that this attack was being launched. If we are correct, then what are the implications? I want to restrict myself in this brief video to only this part of the subject. From an Islamic eschatological perspective, you don't expect from me military analysis. I'm not a military analyst. I have friends who are military analysts, and I turn to them for guidance. No, am I a political scientist? No, you, you can turn to others who are political scientists, not those in Washington, of course, from Pakistan. But um, I am, uh, I've done my master's degree in philosophy and I've done studies in international relations in two universities and of course I've graduated in Islamic studies. But I have been blessed by Allah to pioneer Islamic eschatology in the modern age. So you will expect from me not a military analyst, an analysis not so much of a political analysis, but an Islamic eschatological analysis, and that is what I want to offer you briefly again tonight. Mm. If I am correct that Israel knew that this attack was being launched, indeed on Judgment Day we may be able to learn that the Israeli Mossad played a role <laughs> in getting all these American weapons to reach Gaza. How did they reach Gaza? In such huge numbers and such sophisticated weapons. The, the Israeli Mossad must have played a role in it. So this was not 
surprising for Israel. Uh, but Israel, like the American government, chose to remain silent and allow innocent people, because they were innocent of being uh, um, part of the oppression of the Israeli, of the um, Palestinian people. But they are not innocent in terms of being oppressors of the, of the Palestinian people. They are part of the system of oppression. But they lost their lives. They were not combatants, but they lost their lives. Many of them were taken as prisoners of war, not hostages, not hostages, not hostages. This is war. The Israeli government declared we are at war. And so these are prisoners of war and not hostages. And now then, if the Israeli government knew that this attack was coming and they chose to remain silent and allow it to take place, it can only be because there's a big plan at work and they needed this to be able to advance that master plan. And what can that master plan be? In Jerusalem, in the Quran, we pointed out that the Torah says that the, the Holy Land extends from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates, and that is false. That is false. Moscow, I hope you're listening, that is false. The Holy Land does not extend from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. But if that is in the Torah, and the reason why the state of Israel was restored in the Holy Land is because the Jews believe that the Messiah is still to come. He has not come as yet. They reject Jesus, the son of Miriam, as the Messiah. Jesus is not the Messiah, says Israel. Should I repeat that? Washington, are you listening? Israel says that Jesus is not the Messiah. He is a bogus Messiah. He's false. But the Christian says no. And the Muslim says no. Of course, I'm talking about Christians who follow Jesus. I am not concerned with Christians who follow Santa Claus. Let me take a drink. The Christians in the Western world who are in support of Israel are mostly people who follow Santa Claus. Just look at them at Christmas time and you'll see who they follow. And so now, the Muslim and the Christian who follow Jesus, we say, no, the Messiah was Jesus, the son of Mariam. And he came and he left and that he will return. But they don't believe that. They reject that. And they have brought a state of Israel into being in the Holy Land in order that their Messiah, who is still to come, may be able to rule over a holy Israel in Jerusalem and rule over the world. And so the golden age will come back. If you read Jerusalem in the Quran, you've understood that. And so they need the state of Israel to expand its territory to encompass the biblical frontiers of the Holy Land. You wouldn't hear this from the American Congress. They wouldn't talk about this. They have more important things to talk about in Congress. And so perhaps the planning behind this war, allowing the Islamic resistance in Palestine, remember, I don't use these terms about Taliban and this and that and the other. I have consistently referred 
to the Islamic resistance in Afghanistan. And so too I refer to the Islamic resistance in the Holy Land in contradistinction to the secular Palestinian national resistance headed by the PLO. The biblical frontiers of the Holy Land requires that Israel must expand her territory to the river Nile on this side and to the river Euphrates on that side. If you don't know that, then read my book, Jerusalem in the Quran. And so if I am correct that this war was allowed to take place, as Pearl Harbor was allowed to take place, as 9-11 was allowed to take place, and there is a plan behind it, that's why they allowed it to take place. And so many people lost their lives who could have lived, be saved. It's because perhaps Israel is planning a bigger war. The Israeli Mossad will probably be very angry with me for revealing this is possibly the plan to try to provoke Hezbollah in Lebanon to enter the war formally. And once Hezbollah enters the war, then the road to Iran is open. But if Israel believes that you can launch a war against Iran and that you will be successful, remember Israel, you praying with fire. Why? Because all of mankind are going to suffer if there is a war with Iran. From the time Iran is attacked, the first implication is that Iran is now going to become a nuclear power. Shall I repeat that for you in Jerusalem? The moment you attack Iran, the first implication, and Washington cannot stop it, is that Iran will immediately become a nuclear power, nuclear weapons power. Join the nuclear club of countries with nuclear weapons. Is that what you want for Israel? Hmm? Not only that, the second implication is that why Iran may not use a nuclear weapon on Israel. There's no need to do that. Unless, as in the policy of the state of Russia, it is when Russia's territory, the state is endangered, only then would Russia use nuclear weapons. So Iran might decide the same thing. When this, this, the, the survival of Iran as a state is at stake, only then would we resort to nuclear weapons. But Iran would immediately, be, immediately become a nuclear power. The second implication, Israel, I hope you're listening, is that immediately you attack Iran, all the oil installations, all of them in the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi, all of them will go up in flames because Iran has the missile capacity to destroy them all. And oil burns. It is flammable and it can spread easily. Fire. If this takes place and there is a catastrophic destruction of the oil fields in the Middle East, can you imagine what will be the implications for the world economy? What will be the implications for money? What will be the implications for inflation? All around the world, money will start losing value. All around the world, prices are going to escalate. And the hatred of mankind for you will intensify 
because you are the one who provoked Iran. And as a consequence of launching your stupid attack on Iran, because you believe this is essential for the survival of Israel, this is what you have caused for all of mankind. As all of mankind are suffering with higher and higher prices for everything, including energy, the hatred for the state of Israel will be such that nothing in Washington, nothing in London, nothing in Paris can help you. <laughs> and don't turn to the Lord, the Lord God because the Lord God is angry with you. Now then a word for our people. This is my final comment for this very short video. Short video. Uh, we are going to be watching carefully to see whether Hezbollah is provoked to join the war and to see whether it then leads to war with Iran, as I'm expecting. I hope this stupidity will not prevail and Israel will have some good common sense that you don't play with fire. But uh, for our own people around the world of Islam, Putin is correct. Russian President Putin is correct. He says the hearts of the Muslim peoples around the world are with Palestine, with the Palestinians. This is what he said. The hearts of the Muslim people around the world are with the Palestinians. The governments may be puppy dogs of Washington, but not the people. Look at Jordan and you will see the contrast between the government and the people. Look at Egypt and you will see the contrast between the government and the people. And look at Pakistan, pathetic Pakistan. And look at the Yankee puppy dogs who are generals in the Pakistan armed forces. And you see the difference between the people of Pakistan whose hearts are beating with the Holy Land with the Palestinian Muslims and Christians. And look at the government and the generals. And I'm sorry I have to make one last comment. I didn't intend to be so long. But uh, Allah says in the Quran, Ba'lawuzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem Walaqad karramna bani adam that we have honored we have bestowed honor on all the progeny of adam alayhi salam every human being by virtue of being a human being is bestowed with respect and honor by the lord god every human being and our Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, has said that all of mankind will stand before the Lord God on Judgment Day as equal in his sight as are the teeth of a comb. I don't have a comb with me. And so when the Torah says that the Israelite people are born superior. They are the chosen of the Lord God. And the rest of mankind are inferior. Look at what it has led to today. That the chief of staff of the Israeli armed forces refers to the Palestinian people as animals. Be careful. All those who support the state of Israel, be careful. You are on the wrong side of history when you refer to these people who live in the biggest concentration, open air concentration camp in the whole world in Gaza and you refer to them. Cunt!
contemptuously so as animals and you refer others refer to them as savages I remember many years ago an Israeli Prime Minister named Yitzhak Shamir it was a funeral ceremony for some settler who had been killed by a Palestinian and the funeral was taking place on the hilltop in Israel and he stood up on that hilltop and he said I address you speaking to the Palestinian people that in our eyes you are no more than grasshoppers. The same kind of language was used when the European people went to the Americas and they, they engaged in the ethnic cleansing of the American Indian people. The same thing in Australia with the Aboriginal people of Australia that these are not human beings. No, these are less than human beings. And this was what led to the uh, embrace of slavery by Western civilization, enslaving the African people and taking them to the Americas, using them as slaves. Because they did not believe that these were actually human beings like themselves that these are an inferior people. We are a superior people. Russia has rejected this exclusiveness. Russia, Christian Russia, has denounced this exclusiveness. Christian Russia does not perceive itself as a superior people to the rest of mankind. But the people of Israel are allowing their chief of staff to refer to the Palestinian people as animals and as uh, beasts in these languages and inferior. Be careful on that road on which you are walking because the Quran has refuted it. You are not any chosen people of the Lord God. That is false. This is what Allah says in Surah Al-Jum'ah of the Quran. Ba'da'uzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Qul ya ayyuhallatheena hadu. All those of you who are Yahud, meaning Jews, that part of the Israelite community which rejected Jesus as the Messiah. They are now called in the Quran Al Yahud. Al Yahud means Jews. In Zantum, if you believe, in Zantum Annakum Awliya Ulillahi Mindun Nas, if you believe you are the chosen people of the Lord God, to the exclusion of the rest of mankind. If that is your belief, Fatamanna will mout. In Kuntum Sadiqeen, if you are truthful, then why don't you desire death? Wala yatamanna unahu abadam bima qaddamatiri. No, says the Quran, they will never desire death because they know what they're doing. They know of the evil they are committing. That's why they never. So this is a false claim that you are the chosen people of the Lord God, that you are born superior to the rest of us, and you can say about our people, we are animals. Well, let me tell you, is the warning delivered by Nabi Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him. The government of Pakistan will not tell you this. And the Yankee puppy dogs who are generals of the Pakistan Armed Forces will never tell you this. But we will tell it to you. That our prophet has prophesied because of your relentless oppression and your wicked conduct referring to our people as animals because of this our prophet said he has prophesied 
that you can't tell you not Yehud. You will most fight, you will most certainly fight the Jews. Wala taktulanna woman, you will most certainly defeat them. Hatta yakulul hajar. At that time, when oppression has reached such an intensity, he said, even the rocks and the stones will speak. Ya Muslim, Aza Yahudi un wara'ifa ta'ala fatul. There's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. Our Prophet is not referring to all Jews. Be careful to make that claim because it's false. Our Prophet is certainly not referring to such Jews who denounce the oppression of the state of Israel and who stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Not such Jews. I know them in Brooklyn. I met them in Brooklyn. I met others as well who are Jews and they don't support the oppression of the state of Israel. There are Jews in Israel today who oppose the oppression of the Israeli government. I'm talking about those who are the part of the ruling elite in the state of Israel and who are oppressing the people and those who support the government in the oppression. On that day which is coming when the Messiah returns, remember these words of Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, that the rocks and the stones will speak on that day and they say, Muslim, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.